In this video, I'm going to talk to you about using ultrasound to diagnose endometriosis. But before we dive in, I'm going to tell you that at the end of this video, stick around because I'm going to tell you two insider information tips to help you if you're contemplating having an ultrasound specifically because you're concerned about endometriosis. Is it possible to use ultrasound to diagnose endometriosis? And the answer is kind of. Yes, sometimes, but not all the time. It doesn't help us say for sure you don't have it, but if there's certain things present, then we can say, yes, this is consistent with endometriosis. If you're having trouble conceiving and you visited a physician office for fertility, you most likely had an ultrasound. And if you walk away from that ultrasound and there's no mention of endometriosis, and you later go on to find out that you have endometriosis, was something missed? Not necessarily, because endometriosis is a molecular process. So that means there's several features that simply can't be visualized, either with the eye or with ultrasound. Now, the instances where we can diagnose endometriosis with ultrasound those are where the effects have become so built up that there's actually structural changes where we can actually see something. So again, to recap, most of endometriosis is thought to be molecular, so inflammation, right? You can't really see the players of inflammation, but you can see the effects of being subjected to those long terms. Think of a scar, think of you kind of cut yourself, on your skin, you might see a scar and that might have a kind of contracture. That would be something that was an insult to the body and the body reacted with that scar tissue. The same is true for endometriosis. The disease state itself is invisible a lot of the times. It's just inflammation, you cannot see it. But the long-term effects, you could see. There could be structural changes. Let's talk some more specifics here. We're gonna go through a typical ultrasound of what we look at and I'm gonna tell you how endometriosis could or could not be seen. So let's take a model here of the uterus and the tubes. So uterus, tubes, ovaries. Now on an ultrasound, normally a fallopian tube would not be visualized unless it's swollen. Okay, so this is depicting here a swollen tube. This is a normal fallopian tube. So to typically you're thinking of two major things in an ultrasound that we're able to visualize in a fertility office would be the uterus and the ovaries. Okay, two major things. Now, the uterus. The uterus can have involvement of endometriosis. Let's talk about that a little bit. So one of the prevailing theories is when the tissue of the menstruation would go backwards. So it goes backwards through the fallopian tube and then comes out here and kind of seeds this whole area, which is the abdominal pelvic cavity. It can come out here and it can go to the outside of the uterus and it can implant. And so we have like here, these little purple spots, these little blister type lesions that are depicted here, this is signifying endometriosis. But in general, the inner pink part here is what's actually leaving the body. So that's what's going backwards or leaving the body. In the event that there could be some changes inside the muscle, so it's not the inside and it's not the outside, it's the muscle, that's something called adenomyosis. And it's kind of thought of as a distant cousin or a related cousin to endometriosis. There's some controversy there whether it's two sides of the same coin, but we kind of generally think about it that way. So adenomyosis would be potentially picked up on ultrasound. Not all the time, but there's several clues for that. So that's the uterus. That's about all you can do there. You cannot see these, these little tiny blisters here on the uterus. You would not see that on a fertility ultrasound. Impossible. The next thing that you'll look at on a typical fertility ultrasound is the ovaries. And if there is endometriosis inside the ovary, that's one of the places it can seed, then it can become like a cyst-like structure. We call that an endometrioma. An endometrioma definitely can be seen on an ultrasound, and it definitely means a pretty advanced disease. So that's generally how we, we think about that. But it's not always there. So again, if you don't see it, doesn't mean you don't have endometriosis. Okay, moving our way down through the pelvis. Other things that we might be able to appreciate. Sometimes these blisters, when they become really deep and large, you can see them. And that's called deep infiltrating endometriosis, or sometimes we call that DIE. So with the technology that's available, you can see these lesions now more and more. And so we're looking for them more and more. Common places would be in the bladder, 
or in the gastrointestinal tract as it runs kind of behind the uterus. The next thing we look for is sliding signs. So what we mean by that is all of the organs in the pelvis should be freely movable. Inflammation from endometriosis can cause scar tissue. Scar tissue makes things so they don't move so freely. That's the general principle. So now we're looking for things that don't move so freely. Again, the bladder versus the uterus. Those should move and you should be able to see that on ultrasound, independent of each other. The same thing with the gastrointestinal tract versus the uterus, they should be able to move. What if the ovary was scarred and it sat down here against the uterus and didn't move? By pushing the ultrasound against the ovary, we would be able to tell if that ovary could move or not. If it doesn't move, it stays in one place and it's maybe associated with some discomfort or pain, that would be a good indication that there's some scar tissue going on there. Now, is the scar tissue always due to endometriosis? No, there could be an infection or something like that, but it would be a clue to couple along with historical features like cyclic pelvic pain. Other, what we call kind of soft markers might be focal pain. Focal meaning a distinct area. And if the ultrasound was putting pressure on some distinct area that had endometriosis affected by it, that it might elicit some specific discomfort just in that one area. And that might be another clue, a soft marker. So that's the extent of what we can use ultrasound to do when we're diagnosing endometriosis. Better ultrasound systems like this GE Volusen S8 give us better pictures. Better pictures help us make the diagnosis. Here's a great example of an endometrioma. This is a stimulated ovary. You can see these large black circular type structures. Those represent follicles. And right in the middle there, you see more of a gray area that's kind of circular. That's kind of a classic endometrioma-like lesion. These are obviously jumping out at us, and this is something that would be easily identifiable with any kind of assessment of an ovary. But the more subtle signs, like the deep infiltrating endometriosis or some of the sliding scale signs, those would not just pop out to any ultrasonographer, nor on any machine. Now, I promised you a couple insider tips at the end of this video. If you are having troubles conceiving and you are concerned about endometriosis and you want to use ultrasound as a modality to look for endometriosis, and again, this is not our first line diagnostic. We're going to talk about other diagnostics that are far more focused and superior to ultrasound for diagnosing endometriosis. Okay. But if you wanted to do that or that was your expectation of getting fertility ultrasound done, I want to relate to you two things. One, you need to get it done on a advanced ultrasound. Ultrasound has come a long, long way in the past few decades. And where we stand today really does make a big difference using the most recent high quality instrumentation and machinery when you're looking for this. Why? Because it's not so simple as looking for something that really jumps out at you. You know, there's certain things in the ultrasound that you can see that just jump out at you. This picture behind me here, everybody can see some black circles there. Those are follicles. Some of these things with endometriosis are very subtle. So you need a very high end machine. So make sure if you're getting an ultrasound, you're concerned about endometriosis, you're using a very high end machine. The other tip I'm gonna give you is the sonographer that's doing the scan, the ultrasound. You want to have a user of that machine, whether it's a physician or a technician, you want them to be A, well-trained, and also B, have a special interest to look for these very subtle lesions. So let me give you an example of that. DIE, we talked about earlier, deep infiltrating endometriosis. It's a very advanced technique to be able to pick that up. You have to have a special interest. You have to be looking for it. There's a saying, something like, the head does not know what the eyes don't see. So there's an example of that. If you're not trained to see these, then you'll miss something like that. And things like I went over earlier, like the sliding signs and these kind of softer calls, this is not like typical kind of garden variety, everyday ultrasound. If you go to a hospital and they do a pelvic ultrasound, this is not something they're specifically looking for. You have to go to a center that has specific interest in endometriosis and is looking for these particular ultrasound findings. Go to a place that has a good machine and go to a place that has a good scanner. So I hope you found that useful. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up on this video. And please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Embryo MD.